Welcome back to my Coke Bottle Steam Engine Build Diary. Here I am leveling up the angle vise to 20 degrees because the steam passages are a 20 degree 8th inch hole. There is one of these on each end. I'm just going to show you one of them because they're both the same. The hole needs to run from the bottom corner of this divot that I made earlier. Uh, so I'm centering up the y-axis, which is the left to right on the steam engine here, using the wiggler. And then I'm going to eyeball the position of the hole itself. I'm feeding this down with the MPG just manually and checking to make sure that it doesn't touch the face of the cylinder barrel. Oh, it moved. Why did it move? Hold on. What's going on? I think I had a chip or something underneath the, the piece or I didn't tighten it upright, but it, uh, it did move slightly there. So figure that out and try again. If you're enjoying this build diary, please click the like button and subscribe to this channel. Click the bell button if you'd like to be belled. It's normal to just use the milling cutter for facing here and then follow up with a drill, but as the milling cutter and the drill are the same size, the milling cutter seems to plunge quite well and it's long enough I just decided to plunge all the way down using the milling cutter. So an eighth inch uh, carbide cheapo uh, milling cutter. I got a pack of five of them on Amazon and they seem to work quite well. I'm running at 2900 rpm. Here we can see the holes have come through. They're both uh, clear of the... they're in the middle of the face of the ports there, so that's good. I'm, I'll take that. If you remember last time, I did this. I loaded the wrong G code, which is never a good thing. And I made this horrible, horrible gouge in the side of my cylinder. So now I have to fix that. This is a piece of quarter inch brass, which is the same diameter of the quarter inch end mill that I did the damage with. And I'm using a blunt hacksaw to slowly cut out a piece off this uh, this rod. I'd like to thank my viewers for various suggestions on what to do uh, with this repair. I don't have access to brazing equipment and scary heat tends to melt things when I'm around so uh, I went with this option. I know it's not the right solder but uh, we're probably going to be on compressed air so it'll be fine. The new barrels are only 25 bucks. Then we bake at 450 degrees for 25 minutes. Actually, this is my reflow toaster oven. I was going to try and reflow in this. We'll see if that works. It's already been through two heating cycles to bring it up to temperature. And this is me applying some solder paste. This is just the electrical stuff because we're only going to run this on compressed air. So we don't need the heat resistance and it's what I've got. And then put the part in and in theory, this would do something useful. And that's the kind of horrible mess it turns into. And this is it up at temperature and it's not melting. There's just too much thermal mass in there. So I went in with the big soldering iron and finished it off. And that did get it to stick. Everything flowed. All the holes are filled and we have a horrible gungy mess. Now we stick it back on the mandrel uh, with a screw on that convenient 5mm hole that's still there to hold it from spinning. And we've got enough clearance there that we can go down 0.64 of an inch and bore it out. So here we are manually taking off the bit that's sticking out. And this is going to take a while.
So the boring is an interrupted cut, so it's going to get a bit noisy. And without tail support here, I'm not sure how good this is going to be, but we're going with it. You couldn't take the first cut any shallower without using a smaller boring bar. And we do several more passes. This is just a few of them. To bring it out to diameter. Now that I'm getting close, I'm going to take a measurement with the bore gauge. So after this pass I saw it was starting to take metal off where it shouldn't so I stopped and uh, used hand tools, a three quarter inch end mill by hand and some sandpaper and hopefully it's round and straight but we'll see. The last operation is to turn the outside edge of the top flange. Uh, with a pointier tool, I could have got this done in one go, but uh, these with a trigon, it has to clear the one of the flanges. So take it in part way uh, using the regular turning. And it doesn't completely clear up by the flange, so take a few more passes. And then for the final passes, which don't go all the way around, I just did these by hand, stopping where it would uh, hit against the boss for the steam outlet, that is, I think. No, it's the inlet. That's the steam inlet there on that end. The outlet is on the side. My next videos are going to be a tooling upgrade because I really think my forge chuck is way too big for doing these tiny little things so I'm gonna fit myself a smaller chuck. Thanks for watching. <laughs>